So, the first speaker is Stuart Ellison from SBS. Um, it's a very interesting project working on Rollman disease. If I yes. pronounced that correctly, it's not one I know much about, <coughs> um, but a very nasty disease um, in infants, fatal if not treated. Um, I'll leave you to, to, to carry on, yeah. yeah. Um, so, good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by just thanking the organisers for the opportunity to come and present today and tell you all about how the P4T award uh, we've received has allowed us to progress our research along the translational pathway. So, uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce a disease we're working on. We've been developing a new therapeutic for Wallman disease. It's a, a rare congenital lysosomal storage disorder um, characterised by impaired lipid metabolism. Um, it has an instance of approximately 1 in 100,000 live births. So that equates to approximately three or four new cases of Warman's disease per year in the UK. And it's caused by mutations in the lipogene, which lead to either reduced or complete lack of an enzyme called lysosomal acid lipase. Um, so the image on the right is a, a patient with Warman's disease, uh, a two-month-old uh, two uh, boy with a condition, uh, and uh, he's showing uh, the uh, clinical signs of the disease with the highly uh, distended abdomen with enlarged organs, including uh, the liver and spleen. These patients also have severe uh, digestive tract issues, which cause vomiting and diarrhea, uh, severe malnutrition, low muscle tone, uh, in combination with other symptoms such as jaundice and developmental delay. And up until very recently, there was uh, very few uh, treatment options available for this disease, with the majority of patients dying within the first uh, year of life. Um, historically, bone marrow transplant has been given as a treatment option uh, with the hope that um, donor-derived leukocytes could provide some functional LAL enzyme to these patients. However, this uh, treatment option has a very high mortality rate due to the fact that the patients are very poorly uh, during the transplant procedure and they don't tolerate the conditioning regime very well. In recent times, uh, Enzyme replacement therapies have been developed which can significantly improve disease survival. Uh, of around, um, of uh, patients on the RT, around 60% survive till around the age of uh, five years old. However, it's far from a perfect treatment therapy. Um, it's a lifelong expensive treatment which uh, relies on uh, weekly intravenous administration and the majority of patients actually develop anti-drug antibodies, uh, limiting the effectiveness of the treatments. So we've been developing uh, a, a hematic stem cell gene therapy treatment for this disorder, and essentially how this works is that you can take patients' own stem cells, genetically modify them with a lentiviral vector to incorporate correct copies of the, the lipogene. We can then uh, give these modified cells back to the patient where they can repopulate the immune system, start to produce enzyme which can uh, 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 cross-correct uh, some of the affected tissues in the body. And the beauty of this particular treatment strategy is you can greatly overexpress the functional enzyme in the cells that um, you transplant in, thus improving efficacy of treatment, and you don't get some of the side effects associated with um, a standard bone marrow transplant such, such as graft versus host disease. And we're hoping to use this approach in combination with um, uh, enzyme replacement therapy to, uh, to um, stabilise the patients before transplant to give them the, the best possible uh, treatment outcome. This particular therapy, uh, stem cell gene therapy, has been used to great effect in other monogenic dise diseases, such as metachromatic leukodystrophy. Um, uh, uh, therapeutic for that has just been... Uh, uh, released by, um, just been approved uh, in, the, in Europe, and that's been um, developed by Orchard Therapeutics. And stem cell gene therapy has been used for a number of years to treat various different immune deficiencies. So for, for, in order for us to develop this uh, therapy for Warman's disease, we've done various different proof of concept studies. Um, firstly, we've developed a lentiviral vector to overexpress 
uh, functional uh, lipogene. Um, so we can use these lentiviral vectors in various different uh, in vitro experiments. This one here shows us transducing some uh, microglial-like cells. Uh, these cells are then uh, modified. The, the DNA gets introduced into the host genome, and they can then express functional enzyme, which gets secreted into the media. And we, we can then take this media and demonstrate cross-correction of uh, worm and fibroblasts. You can see on the graph on the right there that we're able to normalize uh, lal activity uh, in, the, in, in the treated cells uh, back, to, back to normal levels. Other proof of concept work we've done, we've been able to successfully demonstrate transduction of warm and hemopoietic stem cells, showing uh, that we can overexpress functional lal enzyme in these cells without any adverse toxicity. And at this stage, you'd normally go on to demonstrate and proof of concept in in vivo studies. However, there isn't a, a very good mouse model for this particular disease. So we uh, chatted with the regulators uh, to see how we could progress further with this. Uh, and they, uh, they've they agreed for us to, um, to do a, basically provide additional in vivo data by doing a biodistribution study in NSG mice, which I'll touch on briefly later on in the talk. <coughs> But essentially, um, what the P4T project uh, allowed us to do was to um, develop the, uh, uh, the manufacturing process to produce a clinical um, scale a medicinal product for almond disease, uh, which, we could, uh, which we can use in the future uh, in a cryopreserved form to put in a, uh, an immunomyelin immunocompromised mice model to provide su supporting data to the regulators. Uh, and essentially, uh, the three main tasks we've, did done, uh, we've performed for this project were to make enough lentiviral vector in the lab to um, do perform large-scale transductions. Uh, we've optimised the transduction protocol in order to reduce the amount of vector required. This, uh, down the line, reduces the cost of the therapy when and if it does eventually get to the patients. Um, and then finally, to perform a, a full-scale uh, stem cell isolation and transduction, um, followed by cryopreservation. So there's various different things we do as part of this process. We evaluate whether the modified cells still develop uh, normally in what we call the CFU assay, and we look at the number of integrated vector copies and also enzyme activity. And as part of the work, we've, um, we're also performing a, a, um, a stability study to make sure the cryopreserved product is still viable uh, after it's a specific time period. Um, so the project was quite, uh, the funding was quite timely for this particular body of work. We'd just spent the past three to four years developing um, a clinical, clinically relevant uh, stem cell manufacturing protocol as part of the IMATCH program. Um, so uh, we, we've done the majority of the hard work. Uh, this next slide just uh, goes through the workflow of what you have to do to make, make these medicinal products. So for validation purposes, um, we uh, obtain a uh, leukophoresis unit rich in stem cells, which we can isolate uh, the stem cells from using a Clinimax system. We've got uh, myself there pictured uh, after our first successful run on the Clinimax. Following uh, stem cell selection, we do a pre-stimulation step that this uh, basically means um, activates the cells to allow for better lentiviral transduction. We then transduce our stem cells overnight with vector. Uh, uh, and then finally, we wash and harvest the cells, at which point most of it's cryopreserved. Uh, we also uh, take some of the cells and evaluate in various different QC testing, such as using flow cytometry to evaluate the purity and viability of the transduced cells. And also we set up 14-day um, culture assays, uh, uh, at which point we can look at normal lineage development and isolate genomic DNA to assess a number of integrated vector copies. Left, so, so we've... Um, We've, uh, 
uh, had a collaboration with the NHSBT um, uh, over in Barnsley, where we were able to manufacture a, a large batch of uh, Warman products. Uh, the results from this uh, went really well. We've been able to achieve um, a product with around seven to eight better copies um, and made sufficient quantities for downstream um, um, uh, by distribution studies. And uh, crucially, this, this uh, research can contribute to future uh, IMPDs. Uh, this is just, uh, just to show how the, the work has allowed us to translate along the, uh, the pathway. Uh, in green, this is the work for the PT, uh, P for T uh, research. Alongside, we've secured some funding from the BRC to get um, uh, GMP uh, vector made. Uh, and then hopefully from then we'll be able to secure funding for a subsequent clinical trial. Um, I'll just skip over that. That's just how a, a future NSG study might look. And finally, uh, just to touch on the impact of this research. So fundamentally, we're trying to create a new therapy for Warman's disease that surpasses current treatment options. Uh, we've had success in the past with this uh, for other programs in our lab. Uh, most notably for MPS3A, which was licensed to Orchard Therapeutics in 2017-18 time. And we've got a clinical trial running for that at the moment. And then more recently, we secured a very large amount of money for uh, another uh, Phase 1-2 clinical trial funded by Avro Bio for MPS2. And finally, I'd just like to thank uh, everyone involved in the project, in particular Jane Potter, who did the proof of concept studies. Uh, and Yuko, who assisted me in this uh, research. And thank you for your time.